they are somehow tranquilized, they're unable to move, they're rendered submissive, and they're taken aboard a ship, often through a levitation beam. The, 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 sh the people on board the ship usually are described as looking like the alien that I just showed you. They're very short, three to four feet tall, big heads, huge eyes, no genitals, vestigial mouth and nose and ears, in other words, not very much of those in evidence, and they stink. They smell like sulfur. Tractors were complaining that they would come in in the morning and their tools would be moved and there would be damage. So he decided to set up a hidden camera to catch vandals. But what the camera records is not the work of a vandal. Well, the chair in this shot is pretty shocking, sliding across the floor. But the most shocking part of this particular piece of footage is the piece of sheetrock. It's actually being ripped from the wall and pulled up and away. If it were just falling, it would have fallen just straight down under the force of gravity. This, on the other hand, was pulled up and away. Terry claims that he then ventured back outside to take more photos. I took a series of three pictures of an upstairs window. But suddenly, he feels that he is no longer alone. I felt this presence come over me, and the smell was like sulfur and roses. Real, real strong smell. When Terry develops the film from his still camera, he's shocked by what he sees. Three consecutive pictures of what appears to be a woman glowing in a pink light, floating in the second story window. Another pink shape is captured at the back door. You would need three people, but you wanted five people that volunteer to be the channel for the spirit. Okay? So it was three was three of them were chosen there. And you had to go back and sit down. And uh, the man shook his head like, a little bit like this. His eyes went glazed, and he stayed at it for a half hour. And the spirit spoke to him. He said, I'm a, I'm a spirit counselor. And what would you like to know? He said, 20 minutes been used as a channel. So they, um, again, the spirit entered into him, and the spirit, the spirit said that he was a spirit counselor that could give him the information that he was looking for. So, um, again, it was given verbally, and it was the voice of Camellia Hood. You are able to reproduce a, a voice, man, and the uh, just the perfection you know these spirits are so intimately familiar with them that now they can imitate them to the T I mean it's hard to, it's hard to distinguish that the person that you're talking to is really not the person that passed away and it amazes me because all of a sudden you know, only Bill would have known that it's amazing nope the spirits that were around Bill that are familiar with him intimately knew that too so uh, I said to uh, uh, George he was sitting against me and said, isn't it amazing? He said, if you think that's amazing, wait, he says, until the spirits uh, impersonate one of the departed people that you know, personally, like an uncle or a brother or a sister or something like that. He says, that is unique. He's, he's telling me about this young lady who is a past life regressionist. And he said, you've got to go see this girl. She's sensational. So I called and made an appointment. She's down on Coronado Island. Her name was Karen, K-I-R-I-N. And I went down to see Karen, and she uh, 
being a, a very spiritually inclined, past life regressionist type of person, she has you lay on the table and take your rings off and your watch, and she's setting up the candles and lighting candles and doing some sort of a little ritual thing. And I'm just laying there watching her. I mean, Paul says she's great. I'll find out. And uh, she's talking to someone. And I'm laying there watching her, and she's talking to someone. And I said, who are you talking to? And she said, oh, I'm talking to your friends who brought you here. And I said, oh, okay. Brought me to your house? She said, no, 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 no. Your friends who brought you to the earth, you've come here from another place, and they have brought you here to do something. I said, I've often wondered about that. Where did I come from? I mean, really, what am I doing here? And she says, well, and I'm just telling you what she said. She said, um, they are Pleiadians, and they have brought you here to do something. And uh, you are ultimately going to be a... Um, emissary was the word, an emissary for them. They're going to channel through you. They're going to use you, and they will speak through you. Uh, and they have been preparing you for, for many, many years. I said, oh, okay. I don't know. And then she goes on lighting some more candles, and then she starts talking again, and then she's laughing. And I said, what are you laughing at? And she said, oh, they told me something funny about you. And I said, what? And she said, they said that about a month ago, you drove up to see Joe and Pat up at Little Alien in a convertible you rented, and you sat on the back of the hood with your feet in the back seat, and you told them you didn't mind doing what you're supposed to do, but you didn't want to be abducted or frightened in your bedroom, and they thought that was funny. Now, at that moment, I became very disorientated. I said, whoa, nobody knew I did that. No one knew I did that. I didn't tell anyone. And she said, yeah, they, they knew. She said, they're telling me you went back out there because uh, you didn't want to go out there and, at night because they scared you the last time. But that um, you went out there and sat on the back of your car, and they thought that was funny. And I said, why would they see humor in a human being frightened? And now that demon is communicating back to the demon that's in the psyche. It's a demon hotline. Not a psychic hotline. You have two demons communicating back with each other what the other person is doing. That's how that works.